when you walk that path, so there's different kinds of shifts. So if you look at the oversoul as a diamond, it's too big to fit in a body. Right. Right. So a facet of that oversoul will come in. I write so, about that. I write about that in my book, actually. Do you? All right. Yeah. Perfecto. Yeah. So, so what can happen is, you know, the, the oversoul sends in a facet and different types of shifts are that facet can leave and another facet comes in and you explore different, different aspects of, of life. Or what, what can happen, which has been my last two shifts, is an additional facet gets sent in for an expansion. Hmm. So nothing leaves. But it's, it's all your oversoul, so there's, there's, no, there's no issue. So you can have a facet swap, you can have a facet addition, or, and many, many times it's because there's been interference, that whole diamond says, we can't, we can't have the experiences we came here to have. The entire diamond leaves and a whole new diamond comes in. Okay. And that's, that's when you're going to see really drastic changes. You can see changes in eye color, uh, sexual orientation. Uh, my blood type changed. That, that's totally what one of my questions was. Like, I've always heard it's pieces of the same oversoul or the same, I, I call it a higher self, but, but that makes sense if there's a completely new oversoul coming in. There can be. And yeah. that's what happened to me that when I, when I talked about that shift for me with the going from, you know, wanting the, the fibromyalgia meds to if my body's supposed to heal itself, why isn't it? That was a new diamond. Hmm. Cause your thinking changed so much. So I, I don't, I think I told you this on our preliminary call, the, the book that led to my spiritual awakening in 2002 is called the ancient secret of the flower of life was written by a man named Drunvalo Melchizedek, and he was a walk-in. And that was like, my, when I had my spiritual awakening, when I was first introduced to all of this, I was introduced to walk-ins. And he he almost died, and he was laying in the hospital, and his nephew was there and said something to him. And he turned to him, and he said, I'm sorry, your uncle's not here anymore. Like, that was like one of the first things he said. It gives me like goosebumps to think about. Okay, so do you do you have the memories of all of these other uh, souls who have occupied Pauline's life? Do you like have Pauline's memories or are they, do, do you remember them through the lens of this new soul now? So the, these are some of the symptoms of being a walk-in. Mm -hmm. And um, so... What happens is they they fade. Okay. And, and this is why it can be incredibly challenging for somebody, especially an interfered with walk-in, even a even a even a walk-in that hasn't had interference, because let's say it's your birth family and you don't know you're a walk-in, and suddenly you've got zero interest in these people. Hmm. Right. And, and the world tells you, oh, it's your parents. You need to love them. Oh, it's your siblings. And you're just like, they could be strangers on, walking down the street. And you could really beat yourself up for not having that connection with them if you didn't know. Mm 